he gave his only Son, and all who call his name he gladly hears. God sent him down to us to show us how to live. He traded heaven for life with us here. Jesus made a difference in our world. Say his name, Jesus. Worship him, Jesus. Jesus made a difference in our world. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. And all who call his name, he gladly sent him down to us to show us how to live. He traded heaven for life with us here. Say his name, Jesus. Worship him, Jesus. Jesus made a difference in our
our Junior Worship Online. But wait, let us first greet all of you at... Happy New Year! It's 2021! Wow, how time flies so fast, Teacher Nell! You're definitely right, Teacher Lyle. So, what did you do last January 1? Well, aside from eating, of course, I was just with my family. Bonding, playing games, and few minutes before 12 midnight, we went out of the house and lighted our sparklers. No firecrackers because, kids, that's dangerous. And I still want to have my fingers complete in 2021. Wow, surely you had a lot of fun. Yes. What about you, Teacher Lyle? I and my whole family had a staycation in a hotel just within the city. Oh. I was just really thankful that my family is complete. And just like you, we were eating all the time, <laughs> laughing together, goofing around, really having fun. But my favorite part was when the family gathered together to thank the Lord for His love, goodness, and faithfulness the past year 2020. We spent the time to pray and praise Him for the good and even for the bad things that happened. Really? We did that too! What about you kids? What did you do last January 1? Do let us know in the comment section below. God is indeed good and faithful and worthy to be praised. Why don't we start our junior worship by singing songs of praises for Him? That's very fitting, Teacher Lyle. Are you with us, kids? Stand up and sing loudly with us. Present singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come into his presence singing Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise the Lord together singing Worthy the Lamb, Worthy the Lamb, Worthy the Lamb. Praise the Lord together singing Glory to God, Glory to God.
That was great singing, everyone. Now, let's bow down our heads and thank the Lord for 2020. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our great God. Thank you for the many blessings that you showered us last year. Thank you for the protection from COVID-19. And also, thank you for extending your healing hands to those who got sick. Thank you for providing our daily needs. Indeed, you are our omnipresent and omniscient God who knows everything. Thank you for allowing us to grow in our knowledge of you and for your love and faithfulness to us and our family. We give you thanks and praise in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Teacher now. It's something that we usually do at the beginning of the year. Can you guess what it is? Hmm. It's something that you want to be or to do this year. Wait, give me time to think. It's usually what our parents encourage us to make. Hmm, that's hard. Remember, when we return to school from break, our teacher usually would tell us to write down or to make a list of your... Oh, I know it! New Year's resolution! So, did you make one? Make what? A list! Oh, I actually didn't write it down, but I did spend quite a long time with God and told Him what things I want to be and do for Him this year. I know I couldn't do it without God's help. That's awesome, Teacher Nell. It's great to have goals, especially ones that will honor and glorify God. Like I also listed down the things I had to give up because I know they did not please the Lord. That's an awesome goal, Teacher Lyle. Boys and girls, have you thought about what things you want to do to obey the Lord? Or what things you have to give up because these are keeping you from following the Lord with all your heart? Let me tell you a story about a certain man in the Bible who couldn't follow the Lord because he couldn't give up his riches. These were more important to him than Jesus. Today's episode will help us understand why we should always give God first place in our hearts. Please open your Bibles to Luke 18 verses 18 to 27 and let's read the passage together. Once a religious leader asked Jesus this question, Good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. The man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. When Jesus heard this answer, he said, There is still one thing that you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the man heard this, he became very sad, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw this, he said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, Then who in the world can be saved? He replied, What is impossible for people is possible with God. In the story, what did the rich man ask Jesus? He wanted to know how to receive eternal life. And how did Jesus answer him? Jesus said, Why do you call me good? 
only God is truly good. Jesus first reminded the man that no one is good and that everyone has sinned. And what was the man's reply when Jesus listed the laws? He said that he has kept all the commandments since he was a child. The rich man was saying that he was a good person. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said that the man needed to give up everything he owned to follow Jesus. This was the one thing that Jesus wanted the rich man to do so that he could follow him and have eternal life. And how did the rich man feel about this? He was sad. He wanted to keep his possessions more than he wanted to follow Jesus. Now kids, what would you have done? Would you have been willing to let go of the things that are holding you back from following Jesus with all your heart? But, wait teacher Lyle, was Jesus giving us a list of things to do so we can enter heaven? No, Jesus does not give us a list of things to do in order to enter heaven. Jesus knew this man's heart. He wasn't willing to give up what he had for the Lord. His riches were holding him back. His great wealth was the one thing that was keeping his heart hard. To be a true follower of Christ, we must give our whole heart to him. How about you kids? Is there one thing that's holding you back from following Jesus with your whole heart? Maybe you are not a follower of Jesus yet because you do not want to give up your sin and repent. Maybe the thing you need to resolve to do this new year is to give up your sin and believe in Jesus' death on the cross to save you. Or maybe you have already turned from your sin and has accepted Jesus as your Savior through faith, yet you may still have things in your life that are holding you back in your relationship with Him. Maybe there is something which you think is more important than Jesus. Is it being jealous of what other people have? Is it not following what your parents say because you think you know better? Maybe you try to hide your mistakes by lying. All of these things can hold you back from having the closest relationship you can have with Jesus. Giving something up is hard, but Jesus said that what is impossible for people is possible with God. We need to ask Jesus for help so we can have a wonderful and closest relationship with Him. The Word of God says in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. This verse reminds that we need to put God first more than anything or anyone. Remember God's first and greatest commandment? We are to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind.
Teacher Renzi here, and let me give you one most important tip if you want your 2021 to be blessed by God. Here's the first thing. Put God first. Why do you think this comes first? Because it's important, as simple as that. Always make God the priority. In life, He should come first. Do you realize that we tend to get busy with school, with chores, and even with playing? And with all of these combined, we have little free time left. But instead of just playing games, watching YouTube videos, and hanging out with friends, we should always find time to spend with God. Hmm, I have an idea. What if we do an experiment? We have here a jar, here is a big rock, these are stones, and lastly, we have sand. I have a question. Do you think that all of these will fit inside this jar? Well, we have one way to find out. Let the experiment begin. Let's try putting an illustration here. The jar represents your life. This rock represents God. These stones represent studying and doing chores, and the sand represents the activities we fill the days in our lives with. This jar is your life, and there's so many things that we enjoy doing every day. It could be watching TV, or it could be hanging out with friends, browsing the internet, and playing games. Another thing that we fill our lives with are studying for our lessons, or for our tests, or it could be doing chores such as sweeping and washing the dishes. If we spend our lives doing only things that we want to do and enjoy doing, we will have no time for God. We have missed doing something truly important in our lives, and it's not a successful life. See? They don't fit. Let's give it another go. but. This time, we'll try adding them in different order. Big things first, then the small ones. When we remind ourselves of who God is and remember that He is greater than anything or anyone in our lives, we see how important He is. We put Him first. We do things that are important to Him, prioritize Him and do what He loves. And when we put God first, we are still able to enjoy all the activities we love to do. If we do these things, we live a full and successful life. Look, it fits! There's a lesson here. If we put the big things in first, Everything will fit just right. In your lives, kids, what could be bigger than God? Nothing, exactly. Our verse today, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, reminds us to always put God first. There are three ways on how we can do that. First, pray. That's an easy thing to do every day. Second, read the Bible. Practice your memory verse every day or every week. Third, talk about it. Talk about God to your friends, teachers, parents, 
siblings or to everyone you know. So, you want to be blessed this 2021? Just remember this basic. Put God first. Let's all learn our memory verse for today. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, let's recite our memory verse together. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. It's been a long day exploring here in the forest. I think I better take a break and uh, have my peanut butter sandwich, crunchy style. Mm. 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 What's this? I smell a flies. Mm. What is this person here? I think I have my peanut butter sandwich! Whoa! Oh. Oh. You really want this, eh? There! You can have the last bite! Whew. I never knew flies were into peanut butter. But sometimes you gotta give up something to get away. Even if it was a yummy peanut butter sandwich. Well, some animals give up much, much more than a peanut butter sandwich just to get away. Have you seen what house lizards do when they feel like they are in danger? You know, some lizards have this unique ability to voluntarily cut off their tail when a bigger animal is about to catch them. That detached tail continues to move for up to 30 minutes, confusing the hunter while the lizard runs away for its life. No worries, the lizard would rather lose its tail than to lose its whole body. It will be fine. In fact, it will slowly grow a new tail over a matter of weeks. Other animals do something similar. Some sea stars also leave behind an arm to escape predators. And like the lizard, the sea star will also regrow the missing arm. Interestingly, if that arm that was cut off is not eaten by some fish or turtle, it will grow into a new sea star. Yes, then you have two sea stars. Another animal that leaves behind a body part to escape are crabs. If they find themselves caught in one claw, they will quickly use the other claw to cut themselves free. Crabs also use their powerful claws to cut their own legs that may be damaged or unhealthy. And just like the lizard tail and the sea star arm, the crabs can regrow their legs and claws. It's not easy for this 
animals to lose a body part, but it's better to lose a tail or an arm and grow them back later than to be eaten alive. We can learn something from these wonderful creatures. As we enter the new year, think of sins or bad habits that you need to leave behind. Sins and bad habits sometimes do make us feel good for a while. But we know God is not pleased when we do them. So what should we do? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 tells us, Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. This verse tells us that we are like runners in a race, and we cannot run well unless we leave behind the sins and bad habits that weigh us down. What is weighing you down? Maybe you need to stop eating unhealthy food? Or cut down on your use of gadgets? Or stop saying certain bad words? Just like the lizard, sea star, and crab, we need to be willing to sacrifice even good body parts to save what matters most. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 tells us that we must seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The rest of God's blessings will follow. So, let's put God first. Happy New Year! Let us pray. Dear Father, we praise you and thank you for this wonderful day that you've given to us that we could have our junior worship online. Thank you for the things that we've learned today, that there is nothing impossible with you. Father, we praise you for the things that you've done last year, 2020. Help us to love you more this 2021 and help us to serve you through this online ministry. Father, I pray for the kids that they will continue to grow more in you and bless their, also their families, Father. We bring back all the glory and praises to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye kids and we wish you and your family a blessed 2021. See you next Sunday! Happy New Year!